Hey there gang, Patrick King here, coming to you live from Nottingham, Pennsylvania. Teaching today and tomorrow at Straight Up Stables in Nottingham, Pennsylvania. Today's question comes to us from Claire, and Claire wants to know, how do you reconcile needing to work your horse at all gates while simultaneously ensuring that you're preparing your horse to be successful before asking for particular kinds of work? loping or cantering in this case. Will working at the lope help to develop consistent relaxation at the walk and trot or should walk trot relaxation come first? To me this question is fantastic because I see a lot of riders that struggle with just this situation with their horse. Well many others but this seems to be a big prime uh, challenge that riders have and this is riders at all levels. Uh, we're talking about horses that have trouble relaxing at uh, all gates and particularly as Claire's mentioning in her question here particularly at the canter so um, will uh, it's kind of a two-part question how how do we prepare the horse for it and should the walk trot relaxation come first so I'm gonna say the canter if we can find relaxation in the canter or lope it will certainly help us to find more relaxation in the walk and the trot because we're just eradicating the anxieties that our horse is carrying when it comes to working in different gates when I'm starting colts uh, for the most part starting colts as in you know getting young horses going under saddle or green horses um, I try to get the walk, trot, and canter within the first ride, if possible, and most of the time that's that's possible, or at least realistic, with a lot of the horses that we find. Uh, there are a lot of horses maybe have already been started under saddle and haven't necessarily been given uh, what I would consider to be the necessary foundation of relaxation at all gates, and so for those horses it can be a little different. I find the first ride or within the first two or three rides if we can get walk, trot and canter and just allow the horse to move unrestricted they will begin to find more relaxation within those gates and they'll start to own the relaxation on their own as a responsibility kind of owning their emotions. Now for the horses that have not had this case, uh, for the horses that have maybe been held back quite a bit for fear of spooking or bolting or whatever the rider's fears may have been, those horses will have a tendency to carry a lot of anxiety at other gates. Uh, I had one at a clinic today, in fact, that was pretty anxious at the trot, and so the idea was just let her trot. You know, we refer to trotting until or cantering until. And the until is until the horse relaxes and begins to own their own emotions. And at that point, then we'll maybe pick up the reins and go to work with them from there. So uh, Claire's question, do we have to get the canter in order for the walk and trot to become relaxed? No, not necessarily, but if we avoid the canter, then we're avoiding the challenge uh, of facing the horse's emotions that way. So if we can work that horse into the canter uh, and canter until, right, allow them, I'm a big fan, let those horses go to the buckle, make adjustments primarily with the inside rein if necessary uh, as we're riding to help maybe bring their mind into focus or something like that, otherwise going right back out to the buckle until the horse can own their emotions. How do we know if they're owning their emotions? The tempo is going to tell us a lot of that. Tempo, from my experience, tempo is an emotional condition of the gait. If the horse is erratic in their tempo, chances are they're erratic in their emotions. So when we're, say we're cantering our horse along, in this case, the horse might be cantering fast and then slowing down, and then cantering fast and then slowing down. When the horse can own the tempo, own the relaxation, and stay steady in the gait, then we know that they're relaxed in that and and you'll feel them you'll feel a change in the body the relaxation will come down and they'll be able to uh, you know feel that relaxation at that point if the horse was far enough along that's when I might pick up and ask for some work on contact uh, if the horse isn't quite at that point yet then you know we go on and do whatever other jobs or tasks we had to do in those moments so uh, getting back to Claire's question all of the gates will help all of the other gates, of course. If we can get relaxation at the canter, we'll have more relaxation at the trot, and then, of course, we'll have more relaxation at the walk. 
Should we jump into that? That's going to depend on your level as a rider. Can you handle, if the horse gets emotional at the canter and gets fast, gets quick, can you handle that without getting scared and without gripping? Because guaranteed, if you add your emotions to your horse's emotions, things are just gonna escalate rather quickly. So maybe that means we need to stick with the trot until the horse has got the emotions better in there and then progress. Uh, or maybe it means seeking the help of another rider that can manage their own emotions when the horse gets upset. Either way, um, but the relaxation is absolutely necessary at all gates in order for us to work successfully with our horses. So Claire, I hope that was helpful to you and to anybody else out there listening. I hope that that may be helpful in whatever situation you're presently in with your horse. Uh, feel free, give us some comments, give us some shares and you know all that fun stuff. If you have a friend who maybe needs to hear this advice, please feel free, tag them in the comment section below this video or feel free to share directly with them. Uh, let's see question of the day for today. What's your horse's best gait as far as relaxation goes? Uh, which one does he, do you feel like he owns his emotions the best at? All right, so what's your horse's best gait? Give me the answer to that in the comments section below this video here. Don't forget, gang, please keep submitting your questions. I look forward to making more of these daily or almost daily videos as much as possible. Your questions are necessary for that. Feel free, put them in the comments section, send them to us direct in a message, or even send us an email. You keep asking questions, and I'll keep talking about horses. Thanks, gang.